Kia ora. My name is Wilfred West from Locksport, Victoria, Australia. And today we're going to be making chilli powder. Now, let's quickly show you the chilies, some of the chilies we'll be using. Now, I'm going to be going through all these chilies and sorting them all out. So we get pretty much all this type um, and so forth. So we, can, so we know I've got a pattern what type of chilies I want. I'm going to be putting them into these jars. Now any excess chilli powder from a jar will go into this bowl here, which is basically just one of our kitchen bowls from downstairs. And once we once I um once that goes into the bowl, any excess chili powders from them will go into a separate um, bowl again. I'll like go into a separate jar again. Now what I bought from this particular company here. Now I highly recommend this company. When I went in there, I explained to them what I wanted, how I wanted it, and why I wanted it, and all that. They helped me out to find the exact things I needed for me, for uh, for what I wanted to do. So we got a pretty much nice white bowl. And the this this mesh here is very nice, fine, and that would be perfect for letting the chilies to go through there. Now there'll only be chili flakes in here left, so what excess chilli flakes I'll be having as I said before will go into this bowl um, once grinded through several times any excess chilli flakes will go into this bowl with any excess chilli from that particular lot now that's the first two items I got I got these little funnels here now I'll probably only use the middle one for these particular jars I could use this bigger one if I wanted to but I'm considering the size of the of that right and how it fits um, how comfortable it looks and also I've got these two spoons here and I've got a feeling uh, that'd be too slow that'd be perfect because you can use this size spoon and you can just pretty much um, drop it into there now I did also get this particular funnel now I do like this funnel because you can pretty much use it for a normal one or you can put that into there say if you've got a um, Consomme or something like that you want to make and you've got all the bones and everything like that and you want to pour the liquid in there without any solids this is perfect for that but I'm not quite sure if I'll use it for the chilli powder because I'll see how fine this generates the chilli powder um, as well so and we've also got this here pretty much a coffee grinder all right spins around like that's an old one but uh, Hey, I've used this plenty of times to grind chili and it works like a treat. It's noisy, so I'll quickly demonstration how noisy this thing is. So that is, yeah, that is very noisy. So while well, I'm gonna be sorting these chilies out into individual chilies so I can work out what type I wanted, what types I want to dry, so I'll lay them down here in the next and or what types I want to grind up and I'll work out the jalapenos and so forth like that because you've got several different types of chilies here and like the hottest one is this one here that there is the hottest chili so I want to keep that separate I want to keep that grinding up like that and when I just lifted this lid I was like whoa the smell hits you um, I still got fresh ones on the out there as well. They're still growing the chilies, which is quite good. And with them, and what I do is grab one of those like orange ones there, and I'll just cut one of those off the get one of those off the bushes and cut it in half, and boil it with spuds. And oh man, that really brings a flavour of chili into the spuds. Then what I've done with the spuds, like last night I made a roast, did a spit roast, and put that onto the barbecue as I was doing the spit roast. And the spuds really came out with this really nice chili flavour to it, just from one chili. As I said before, I recommend going to this company. I highly, um, they're very nice people, and they've got a lot of stuff there, which, well, I like to be able to use in um, cooking and stuff like that, and also doing videos. Well, next step, we'll see the chilies dried out. Welcome back. Now, I sorted them all out into their Pacific colours and types. This is the jalapeno ones, which are really um, hot. These ones here are the little bird's eye chilies. These ones here have developed into a 
already purple type of colour, so I'm not quite sure if I will grind these ones up. These are probably better off if you put them to water and just let them soak and stuff like that. Um, these ones here, the yellow wax ones. Um, now, these two here are pretty much the same chilies because this one's just a drier, drier colour when you dry it, when you dried it out. And these ones here have got a really shiny, shiny colour, but they're pretty much the same. So these ones here are going to be um, the base chilies, which I want to pour into one container. So these are the common ones, really. I'm going to fill them all into one container. Oh, yeah. That's it. Actually, is that... Yeah, that looks more like... See, these brown ones here, I'm not quite sure. I think they they are like these ones. But I'm really not quite sure. Because they're more brown than green when you dry one of these out. Oh, they could be. I think I might put them in there as well, actually. I really want to keep that colour. Is what we're looking for. See, that's part of that one. I just want to really keep this particular colour. So now that's set up. Um, shake that down. Uh, we'll probably create some of these. Grind up some of these as well. Um, but pretty much that's what we got. It's a boxed. There's one type. Pretty much one type I'd say. Except for maybe these ones. These type of here. But I really want to keep that the same colour. I don't know if that's going to give me enough chilli to make a decent chilli powder. I know that will, I know that should. These I'm not quite sure if I will grind up. These I'll grind up, use throw them whole into soups, throw them whole into stews. Or even when I'm doing um, spuds or something like that, or cooking spuds. Um, I'll throw, throw a couple whole into there and just let them do their magic. So I'll put this one out of the way. And just... Well, okay, so what I'll do is I'll probably grab. I'll leave these chilies at the moment until we sort out what is going to go into what first. Now we will start. I might grind up with these because I don't know how these are going to be uh, not as hot. Then I'll go for the red and then we'll go for the orange, which one's going to be hot. So, pretty much. Okay, if we can see this, I might have to move these out the way so I can put this in the centre. That's come on. That's okay. We can see that. Move the chilies out the way. So all you do is layer this. Pretty much put chilies into here. We'll fill it up. We'll probably grind all these because there's not that many of them. One more. Uh, a couple more we can fit into there, I'd say. Now this is going to make a bit of noise. And yeah. What I like to do... I want to keep these dry, right? That looks pretty good. Now, we've still got some lumpy bits here. Now, whew. <coughs> the chili flavour goes straight through. Now, before we grind our next lot, Oh my god, no, no, no. Move all these chilies out of the way. So we can get the camera to view this. Now, this is just simply get this, tip that into there. Okay. Now, these should have no moisture whatsoever in, in them because they've been sitting for ages drying. Um, hmm. I'm going to fill this one up again. Just 
remember when you take the lid off, don't breathe in. Now that's ready to go for another lot. So we'll grind this lot again. But before we do that, I'll just show you pretty much this is what you do. You get yourself your sieve and you just tap. Okay, use a spoon if you want to. You can get really fancy. But basically, you're just trying to get that into there. Now you're going to left with some big chunks. You just keep doing this. I don't mean to try to do a little bit of time like this because otherwise it just takes forever. You can just move it around too. Oh, it goes through your nose. Now that little excess ones will go back into the grinder. Uh, can we fit that into this one? I'll grind this one down first and then we'll tip this back into there and give it a bit more of a grind, shall we? So, let's move this out of the way. this back into here right before I take it out so all we're left and we'll grind this some more sorry And you can see <coughs> now you can see this is a finer chili powder already just by looking at this you can see how fine that is so what we'll do is we continue on the process as it before simply just tap that until it all goes through now this probably won't fill up a jar. If it does, I'll be surprised. But it'll give me an idea of how much chili powder I'm gonna to need to fill up a jar. So. Well, the reason why I'm doing this is because I want the finest possible chili in here here. See, without lumps like that. Now, with the finer chili, you can put it pretty much on anything. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, well, I was waiting for that. Now, the reason why I'm... I'll try not to actually talk or breathe. Now, the reason why I want this fine chili powder in here is so that I can put it onto anything. I can put it onto a, put it onto a steak. I can uh, sprinkle it into soups. I can sprinkle it into salads. I can pretty much put it anywhere I want to. So pretty much this is just 
as this before, keep going till you're satisfied, till you've gotten all the pretty much finest points you can get out of it. And it's a beautiful, almost a musty colour. Mustard colour. Now, this excess, you're not going to throw that away because that there, even though it's rougher, I could possibly put it into there again. Um, excuse me, nose. And see if we can get finer, but don't think we will be able to, but there's no harm giving it a go. So you've got a couple more lumps still in here. You don't want lumps. So this can be sprinkled over, say, roast spuds when you're doing roasting and stuff like that. Um, you can, as it's before, you can put it into anything you really want to. And that's the key about growing your own chilies. You can, you can buy them fresh, let them and dry them out to harm. Oh, excuse me. There's. that I should really think about doing that because you see the, the puff of chili powder come up <laughs> gotta be really careful now let's see if that's done any finer job with that if it has it has if it hasn't it hasn't like you see in the lid here that's got a really nice nice little powdery coating that will add flavour into anything you grind up in here, but I'm, we'll wash all this equipment after use. You, now you can see it coming out. We're still getting some more out of this, which is good. You could probably keep going until you get this really down so there's nothing left, but I'm not overly worried. As you can see, I'm not going to run out of chilies in a hurry. Now this one here was the oh, waxy white, that's what they call them, waxy white chilies. Um, now I did have another tub approximately the same size as these and I gave a whole bunch away to a professional cook and he uses them in his uh, cooking and restaurant and stuff like that, or where he works. Too. So, that's what's left of your chili pan. Now I could possibly keep doing that as I said before, but I think it's really worth it. You don't really need to worry about going overboard. Now this, you're not going to waste. That little, now this little extras here, they're going to go into, it's a fire, it's a, um, it's a rougher mix, but these can go into anything you want, like soups. You can even put them onto steaks if you really, really, really want to. Um, but gives you that extra. Oops, do it this way. The ball's not as big. Now they are fantastic for those type of things like soups and stuff like that. Now this is the fine chili powder we're talking about here. You can see, like, just moves around like that. That is really, really fine. You can even see dusting here on the bowl, just there on the edge, on the edge of the bowl here. But we're not going to be too fussy about how we, uh, what do you call it, how we put all this chili powders away. And all you do is just go with that, fill this up. Now, as before, I don't need to get this any finer, so the, the other one is not what needed. All you do is just shake that in there. Try to see. This lot almost fills this jar up, so we'll get the rest of this chili powder into there. And 
I'm going to have a little problem here. I'm trying to Let's see if we can get this into there. If not, we'll have to figure another way of doing that. Excuse the uh, the bowl in front of the camera. I'm just trying to get this last little bit of I'm trying to get all the chili out of the bowl if I can. Um, so, it will all go into there. Now, I'm not going to worry about the clinic giving this a wipe down because the ritual will go into there and this is probably so minute of flavour. So, now, oh, excuse me. this is the end result. Now, normally there's Green lids you can get over these, which are sprinklers, and you can sprinkle them, and so forth. But I'm happy with this as is. It doesn't have one of those flip up lids, but that's okay. I know that that will last a while. I can gently sprinkle this over things. I can put it into soups, so I can put it into salads. Now, let's go home to our next chili, which is what we're going to do. Ah, oh, my nose is aching. So that pretty much filled up that. So two container loads of this pretty much fills up um, your chili. These might be a bit more because they're smaller. I can fit a bit more into one area. So I might do one and then put it into a container and then do another one and put it into a container. Don't want to overfill it. And the same process applies. Like you can buy dryers um, for about twenty dollars these days, and they, it takes about three days to dry them. I found um, depends on where that where you put them, and you got to remember the area you do put them. That area is going to pretty much um, stink and chilly when you're drying the whole area. When you're pretty much, pretty much drying it all out, it's going to stink and chilly. Oh yeah, that's really good. Now I could probably grind that. We could grind that a bit more. See if we can get more of a chili. Whoa, with chili. <laughs> Let's see if we can see it on the camera now. Yep, this one didn't do it, but. We don't want to go overboard. Now you can see this one's turned out to a nice, more or less, an orangey red. Chili. And the same process as before. Like you can see that's beautiful, got like a golden, golden red there. That's what this one looks like to me. Okay, let's transfer this back into here, and I'll put some more of those chilies into there. Not worried if I make up too much of some of them, but Some more chilies into here with this 
this lot. I think I'm gonna go a bit more. Don't mind if we, because if, if, if we haven't filled the jar, we've got another jar, we can just put them into that as well. But we don't want to take overly too much. So, that should be okay. And the same principle as before, we'll grind it up. We'll just do it on the camera. Ah, excuse my sniffling. doesn't puff up like the other one did but you can sure smell it oh, oh well. now I find all these chilies here were grown on this property so I find if you grow your own and you know pretty much what's going into it okay I know what I put into the soil I know what I what I have um, I know what I've put into the soil, I know uh, what I've given it for the feed, uh, water-wise and so forth like that. I know when I've picked them, if there's been any um, any bugs that have been biting onto them or anything like that. Um, I know when I've dried them, how they will dry it, um, how long they will dry it for, uh, and so forth like that. Now as you can see, there's nothing else going into this chilli powder bar chilli. Okay. Now, you can probably mix these up and have created a different, um, a different type of chili mix if you really wanted to. Um, but honestly, yeah, you can do that, or you can create different type of seasonings and put other stuff into there, salts, different peppers. You could even get um, do it with garlic when you're having heaps of garlic, dry your garlics out and make a garlic powder as well. You could even make your own Moroccan seasoning if you really wanted to. But you could have a lot of herbs and <laughs> a lot of patience to do that. But this is pretty much anybody can do. Okay, so if you like your chilies, you can see it hasn't taken me that long really to grind these up. I've just been taking a bit longer because I want to get everything out of them. Well, we could grind this up a bit more. We might as well. And that's what I mean. I want to get all the goodness out of it. I want it. I want it as fine as possible. So I have a beautiful, beautiful fine, like silky powder that I can either add water with it. I can add. I can add milk or whatever you want with it, or even to creams and so forth. Now I'm going to grind this up one more time. And you don't have to grind them up as fine as this, but I find with this grinding so fine, it's like it's like silk, really. You can put a little bit of this on your steak, right? Sprinkle a little bit with salt, and you don't taste the heatness. You feel it. You sweat it. You and it, it just feels and it tastes nice. It adds flavour to a meal. So, oh. Oof. And it makes you sweat. <laughs> so that is, like I'm standing here pretty much warm now because of the, um, I'm breathing in the chilies and handling the chilies. We're getting a little bit out of this, but. There's not much more going to come out of that, so that's left over for this one. I could possibly grind it down more, but what's the point? You tip into that bowl, and you can see the two different chilies there. Now that will bring up a nice mixture by itself.
Now, same principle. We'll get a jar. Oh, excuse me. Good thing about this, you don't have to worry about unless you've got a really massive difference in chili flavours. Um, you can pretty much do what I'm doing at the moment. fill this jar but that's okay. I'll put some in another jar. Yeah. I told you I was going a bit too much on this one but I don't mind. Liggers one. Now look at that. So you can see by that's more of like a greeny colour now, really, if you look at it. Hint of yellow, but this has got like a ooh, orange colour with red flecks in it. Um, so we've got those two chilies. Excess chili powder like this, we just put into here because we're going to use it. We're not going to waste any of this. But as I said before, I know everything that's gone into this chili from the start of I'm buying the plant, basically putting the plant in the ground to growing the plant and harvesting the plant. Not many people can say that, right? They don't know where the chili comes from. But if you notice in the shops, their chilies have been all oh, like a lot of dry herbs and that have come from overseas, like China, made from imported or local ingredients. And there's even like cardboard um, or other stuff, that, like, I don't know if it's real cardboard, but I think it's bark bin. You don't know what you're getting in there, right? And that's the thing I'm worried about. You don't know what type of chili powder you're, what, if you're getting pure chili powder, if you're getting a, a like something else that has something like uh, bark or something else into it or you don't know what you're getting in there. As said before, in this, I don't know exactly what I'm getting in this. Now you pay over two, over up to four bucks or four dollars fifty for something like this in the shops. But the thing is, though, if you grind it yourself, it costs you next to nothing. Now this is the last chili we're going to grind. I think this is going to be turn up like the other one, but this is the hottest chili. I will probably grind some of these as well. Uh, next as well. This chili is the best, I think. I like they're all good, but this one's going to be damn hot. But you don't know what you what you're getting in the shops. You don't know what if it's been tested, if it's been um, the government's gone through it and saying this these type of chilies are fine. They, that's something I really, really like to know. Like what type? Of, if I'm buying herbs, right? I want to know exactly how much is made up of all those herbs, not something else like um, putting uh, basil, oh, what's it, ba parsley in. Sorry, yeah. Like oregano had like 80% parsley. I mean, how do you get away with that? The reason why I try to bounce it up and down, like turn it off and not, I'm trying to get these other pieces that are just constantly spinning to start to catch and break up. This one here, I'll take the lid off and I'll try not to breathe. Oh, that actually has a different smell totally again to the other two chilies. It has 
It's actually a nicer smell when you smell it. I don't know if it's a combination of all of them, or just this chilli, but it, raw. Wow. It's hard to describe the smell. It's got like a chocolatey smell to it. If you get, if that's the word, you, it's really, really nice. Now this one, as you see, it's really fine. Cut up. Um, but this is wow. You can see it coming right down like this. I don't know if the camera can see it, but that this has a really pleasant smell to it. Like, I don't know, chocolatey or actually makes you want to smell this chili powder. Ah, it's, I don't know, it's like it's got a slight sauce smell to it. I don't know, it's really, really nice. So what I'll do is we'll transfer this back over to here. I don't know if it's a combination of all three chilies I've used so far, but it has a really pleasant smell to it. I find I'm actually finding it pleasant. Do one more like this. Now all these chilies here will go back into the container and stay dried. Um, we'll use these as we need to use them as well. Oh, and those. We'll start this up again. Put that underneath there. Perfect. Well, it's still one bit here. So we'll try that again. Let's see, okay. So we have a bit bigger chunks into there, I think. Oh, wow. Well. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> I was waiting for the sneeze. But wow. This chili does smell really nice. I don't know what it is, but it looks really good to eat too. That is a bright orange chili on the thing. And it looks like um, a sweet almost. That's the only way they really describe it. Excuse my nose. Uh, it's about all I want to get out of that. But what I'll do here is I'll grind that up because I've got some big pieces in there I want to break down. Even if we don't use them in this, if they don't break down this one, but I want them to break down. So when I put them with the other chili over here, they're pretty much all the same size over there. So, yeah, you can see, 
that's still got some chunky bits into it, which, yeah, you don't, don't really worry about it too much. Ah, oh, excuse me. Whew. Pretty much that's all we're going to get out of that one. So we just tip that into there. So if you see this one, see all this will go into a bowl, all right, into one of these jars. So that'll be a mixed one. I'll probably top it up with plenty of the other one there. <sighs> now I'm going to quickly stop this one because I need to blow my nose. I'll be back. Now, we're basically the same principle as before. You pretty much just spoon that into there. Now it does look really, really nice, this one. It's got like a, I don't know. Is that some, I don't know if it's orange or brownie colour. It has a look to it, I don't know. But it has a really pleasant smell. Now you can buy the fresh chilies in coals or whatever um, and dry them yourselves. Um, I, you just, that's just before you don't know what chemicals are going into them and you don't know how they're growing. Like, I think our food laws in Australia need to be toughened. That's my personal opinion. Um, that's that one. It's not quite a full jar. Well, I'm not overly worried about this because this is really the hottest one. You can see that there compared to that it's slightly different colour. You can see the colour's a lot different. You can tell that's different colour as well. So let's keep them aside like that and we'll go to the next one. Now last but not least is going to be these green ones. I don't know if, as I said before, these ones here, I, a lot of people use these only for, like, they'll soak in water and they'll get that purpley, nice purpley colour red out, red out of them. I don't know if I will grow it. There's not that many here. Oh, we've got two coloured jars. Eh, hey, why not? We'll put some into the grinder. Yeah. And we'll see how we go, because we might get a little bit out of it. And then we've got that green one to do our last one. Because these will add a different flavour again to anything you put it with. That's one good thing about these chilies. The flavour is... Each one of these has a unique um, aroma, a unique... Um, a unique uh, flavour as well. Now I don't want to do too much do we? Well, we leave a couple for um and as before these ones will taste these are almost it's like much like glass this thing all right you can see how thin that is it's like looking like you can always put your hand through it almost it's like glass almost i'll leave these three so we've got three for later um And those ones, I'll pop, as I said before, they'll definitely go in soups, stews. They'll never get wasted. Now, as I said, 
that same principle as before. Now this is a bit bit of a rougher grade. I could probably uh, I might yeah, give it a bit more of a spin, see if I can get it a bit finer. But it has a similar look to, to this one here. So Yeah, it does. It looks very similar, but slightly darker, but, and it looks very, very similar to it. Not much I'll get out of this, but I'm not really, really worried. Yeah, it looks very similar to it too, but you can see how dark that red is. one more time into this. Now you could go as fine as you want to try to get this. I think after a while I think you're always going to have a little bit left over. Right? No matter what you do, there's always going to be a little bit left over. Now do you keep that as a separate entity? So you've got like a like almost like a, um like a pepper quality. Or do you mix it in here? See, I won't. I wouldn't mix that into here because it's a finer grade. That has more a lumpy grade. You'll taste the difference on your tongue, even though it'll probably dissolve just as well. But to me, I think I would. You would taste it if you're putting it into um, something that that you really want that fine chilliness into it. So, we'll do the same with this one. We'll get all of it out, or much as we can out. And that will go into its own little jar. And then we'll do the green one. And then, all this here will go into its own jar as well. Pretty much that's done. So, that can go straight into there. Now you can see the look. You can see the different chilies there. Now that looks really awesome as far as I'm concerned. I've got to be careful of spilling someone. Uh, oh, I've got plenty on the cloth, I think. <laughs> so now let's go back to this again. And we want to. It might, it might be a full jar, but I'm not overly worried about that. As I said before, they're normally. You put them whole into things. Or you soak them in water. These, this, this chili mixture here will last us a while. All right. If it lasts half a year or a year, well, I'm happy. If it doesn't, that's okay. I've got plenty of other chilies I can grind up. Now we've still got plenty of chilies we're growing as well. Like I found, and the other day I found those one. I got one of those ones off the off the um, plant fresh, just chop the green off, um, cut it in half and popped it in boiling water with some spuds and that gave this, with a bit of salt of course as well, that gave the spuds a whole new taste. Uh, you can actually taste the chilli, especially on the skin of the spud, which was wow. Even after frying it, on the barbecue, right? It still gave that chili, it gave that chili kick to it. So now that's that one there. So you pretty much, that looks very similar to that one, but darker. Um, yeah. So we've got one more chili to do. It's this one here. 
Now we've got heaps of these, <laughs> so I don't have to be overly fussy about which ones I'll grab. I'll grab the smaller ones out if I can, because the bigger ones I'll probably want to use into, like when I'm cooking with spuds again, I can drop a whole big one in there. I don't even have to break it apart. Like I want to try to find, like skinny, small ones. So when I'm when I want to cook with these, I can try to keep the bigger ones out for the bigger purposes and just use the small ones for chilli powders and stuff like that. Because when you, if you look at it, you put that into a spud, oops, you put that into a spud, you put that into a spud. I put that into a boiling spud, I may even cut it in half, but I wouldn't, but in that could, you could miss it. Uh, unless you want to eat the chilli things afterwards. I'd still like, yeah, it's not really worth it. So this green batch, just grab every single small one I can get. And sort of throw them in there. And you can see that some are shiny, some are dull. I don't know if that's because of two different types of chilies. Um, while well, the drying process one dried out further than the other one has. But a lot of these when I was testing them, like this one and this one here type of thing, this was still soft, so I had to leave it longer because, and, but then this one here came out perfect like that. <coughs> I don't know the reason why. If anybody out there knows the reason why, Please let us know. So let's see, that would be enough. No, that'd be enough. Don't be greedy. Now this here. Pretty much gonna be our main lot of chilies that we want to we can use for anything literally. Yeah, let's get this one going. Lumpy here. Right. Oh. My nose. Okay. See, this one doesn't have that. It has more of a sharp smell to it than the these ones here. Right, that's okay. But you can tell straight away it's totally different. Green colour. It's got more of a Smells a lot different. Smells fresher. You can smell like um, you know how you smell the grass and stuff like that. It's got that type of smell to it. And we'll grind this up again. Brought me this, this sneeze land. <laughs> I'm telling you what, describe that one. Wow. We'll grind this up. Principle. And we'll give all this a quick 
a good wash later, especially the um, the bolt. <laughs> the bolt. Only way to describe this smell is more like a grassy smell. I'm going to try to get as much as we can out and grind it through this sieve. Pretty much not much is falling now. So that's the end result of that one. We'll give ourselves another jar. So now we've got one, one, two, three, four, five different types of chili powder. Which comes in handy. I said before for multiple things. Now you're gonna get purists and say, oh well, this one's mixing with that flavour and all that. You could clean the bowl out and then and have one type of chili powder only go through the sieve and go through the bowl and into the bowl and into the mixer and then do the same thing again. But that takes way too much effort and time. You put, I know exactly where every, where all these came from. I know exactly what went into all of these chili powders. Okay, so having a little bit of extra mixing to there is kind of a surprise as well. Just trying to get this last little bit out. Now, if you had, I was going to cook something tonight, I probably would dump it in this bowl for a while and mix it around there like a bit of meat or something like that. But I did a roast last night, so you've got this one, and we'll do that. I know I could grind more of this up, but I'm not overly worried about this as before this one. We have plenty of variety here now to especially cover any chili powders. Now, the last container we'll throw our excess stock into. Now that looks beautiful. Like a rain, like rainbow chili. You can tell this, you can hear it, it's actually more of a coarser blend than the other one. It's almost like um, salt or very finely grinded um, pepper, but not overly fine, fine pepper. There we go. Now, I pretty much don't know how to shake that, that just went straight through. Now that is all those chilies combined. I'll quickly have a look at that. So, that's our green chilli, and that's, a, that's our mixed chilies, green chilli. That was our purple chilies. That was our hot chilli, a very hot chilli. That was our waxy white chilli. And this was the uh, bird dye chilies, I think they're called. So, in all sense, all that time that took me to make all these different chilies. Now, fair enough, these two are very, very, very close to similar, but that's slightly darker than this one, you can tell all that. But as I said before, these are perfect. Whatever you want to use them for, however you want to cook them, um, put them in soups, stews, on your steaks, um, and even on your, like, even on salads or something like that. 
Uh, and I know exactly where everything came from here. I know how it was made. I know how it was, how it was grown, I should say. How, when I plucked it and stuff like that. What went to the ground, what I fertilised it with, and so forth like that. And I know every single one of these are perfect little chilies. No, nothing touched them, no, no, the only, the only things touched probably human hands. But um, I know no bugs got into them. I want to thank again <laughs> this company here. I want to thank you again for helping me find all the products I need to. Um, I think they look good. They, they perfectly, they're basically exactly what I want them for. Um, and so forth like that. Now, my name is Wilfred West from Locksport, Victoria, Australia, signing off. Thank you again for watching my videos and all comments are welcome. Um, yeah, and you all have a great day now.